this is Dolio, an original thriller fiction podcast presented in serialized format, a chapter at a time, written by Jared Canton, narrated by Joshua Canton, a Steady Chaos production, 2019. Previously on Dolio, Gary Daniels learned of his son Ryder's continuing struggles with bullying and decided it was time for a drastic new course of action. Episode 3, Grubs. As we descended the stairs into the basement, Dad crossed his arms and decided to leave his coat on, suggesting it was cool in the room. I, of course, couldn't tell, nor care, one way or the other. The room was damp and musty, about the size of a large living room, with blue mats covering nearly every square inch of the red-hued concrete floor. It was housed within a small, run-down ranch in a dingier part of town than I was accustomed to. I hurriedly dropped my coat to the floor and scurried across the mats, readying myself for instruction. With boiling anxiety, my wristwatch beeped three times, temporarily muting my excitement. I looked around for the bathroom, but there were no signs. Although I can feel sensation, my ability to predict bladder and bowel movements is temperamental at best, and downright non-existent at worst. So, the wristwatch notified me four times daily to use the restroom, no matter where I was or what I was doing. I shot a glance at Dad to see if he had heard the warning shot as well. He had, and he pointed to a wooden door to his left. I ran in and tested my watch's accuracy. As usual, it was spot on. Yet another disaster averted by one of Dad's ideas. I came out of the bathroom to witness Dad speaking with a large man in normal, if not slightly disheveled, street clothes. He was maybe a few years older than Dad. The man's right arm protruded slightly from his sleeve, but ended just below the elbow, allowing the poorly healed remnants of his forearm to move about spastically. I couldn't tell if he could control these movements or not, but I averted my eyes so as to not offend him with the same curious stares I had experienced throughout my brief life. As I stepped to the edge of the mat, the man turned to me and smiled. This is First Lieutenant Grubbs, Dad gestured towards the stranger. There was something absent in the man's face, something missing in the way he stared in my direction without specifically targeting me with his eyes. He had red, healed, raw hamburger pattern scarring across his left side of his face that stretched to a point at his right eye. He had no eyelashes, and his eyebrows were thin and patchy. As he stared in my direction, he didn't blink, not once, and over time, his penetrating stare seemed to wander from my position. I'm just Grubbs now, you can call me that. He stood perfectly straight, his arms, or what was left of them, at his side, his legs sturdy but aligned closely with one another. His mouth wasn't symmetrical, and it moved oddly as he spoke. The left side must have healed somewhat shorter than the right, creating a sideways teardrop shape. When his mouth moved, the disfigured side appeared strained, as if the scar tissue could rip free at any moment. Dad sent a stern look my way, and retreated to a dingy old couch edging the mats. He said nothing, but his eyes followed me intensely. I'm Ryder. I know. You're a gifted young man, Ryder. Your father has told me a lot about you. Pride welled inside of me, nudging at the overabundant curiosity for permission to coexist. Curiosity won out as I had to know more about the man standing before me. The man that was supposed to convert me from victim to victor. It was rare for me to be called gifted in any positive way, but he had. The doctors and nurses called me special, but when they said it, their faces always twisted with sadness or sympathy. But Grubbs did not. He called me gifted with a look like my father's. A look that made me feel unique in the positive, as opposed to unique in the way that my watch and ski goggles made me unique. Before we get started, it's important that I have an understanding of you, who you are. Step forward. I took two steps forward, closing the gap between us by about half. His eyes still focused above and past me. Closer. I took another step and our toes now rested just feet apart. His large hand moved forward towards my face, and with gentle inquisitiveness explored the layout of my nose and chin, then up to the goggles that covered my eyes. His second arm flailed before him, as if unaware its lower half was missing. He grasped my shoulder, and then elevated up to the base of my neck before moving down to my other shoulder. He pulled my right arm forward, then my second arm, and grasped both of my wrists in his hand. He pulled them out laterally hard, balled my hands into fists, and took a half step back so my fist fell just shy of his torso. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to defend yourself by any and all means necessary. Are you a black belt? My curiosity got the better of me as I asked the one question that I thought was appropriate, over the many I had that were certainly not. 
He smiled, a wounded half-smile, but didn't respond. His face lowered to level with mine, but his eyes did not follow suit. I'm going to teach you to fight like a marine and grapple like a blind marine. I exhaled. You're blind? I am, he said. His answer filled me with doubts, not only about his skills, but about how a blind, wounded, and one-armed man could teach karate. As if he could sense this, he removed his hands from my wrists and stepped back two full strides. Strike me. What? Me, perplexed. John, do you really think this is necessary? Dad asked. Please, Grubb's word ripped confidently through my dad's sentence. I shrugged, stepped forward, expecting a show, but instead struck Grubb squarely in the midsection. He exhaled, almost a cough. I'd caught him pretty good. Not surprisingly, he was blind. Nobody can avoid being struck all the time. Even when I could see, with the training of the greatest military in the world, I still got hit. A lot. But those prepared, and without fear, can use being struck as an opportunity to learn and react. I nodded, as if following his reasoning. Again! I lurched forward in much the same manner as before, except this time my fist glanced harmlessly off Grubb's side as he pivoted slightly, dropped his arm, locked my wrist, and effortlessly rolled to the floor, dragging me into some kind of strange human pretzel. The whole process took a fraction of a second, but immediately underscored his point. Use the experience of being hit to not be hit again. Use contact to react and to counter. If you can't fight like the ideal marine and not get hit, fight like a blind marine and make sure you only fucking hit once. I gathered myself and rose to my feet. Any doubts? I shook my head before realizing that was a futile approach. No, I corrected. When I turned to face Dad, a wide grin had already consumed his face and he turned from me, unsuccessfully shielding his laughter. You of all people should know that you can't judge a book by its cover. One of Dad's common mantras echoed in my head. Grubbs jumped in. You see, Ryder, disability cannot preclude you from learning or evolving a discipline. Like you, I have challenges. He said it with a heavy sigh, like I only knew the half of them. He continued, Unlike me, yours will not stop you. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed Dolio, please come back for future episodes arriving at regular intervals, and subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast application.